Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. As we welcome people in, we'd love you to share your name, pronouns, organization, um, and then education sector. And by that, we mean uh, early ed, K-12 or higher ed, your focus of work in the chat. Great to see you all. Thank you all for introducing yourselves in the chat. <clears throat> Please continue to do that, and we're going to go ahead and get started with our presentation today. It's such a pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Abby Ridley Kerr, and I'm a senior research and data analyst with Ed Trust West. Um, Jana, I'll pass it to you quickly to introduce yourself, and then I'll kick us off. Hi, good morning. I'm Jana Left. I'm a senior educator engagement associate at Ed Trust West, and so glad to be with you all this morning. Great, and today we're going to share a bit more about EdTrust West work generally, and also our Data Equity Walk Toolkit. Um, and, and use that framework as a group together to reflect on data about the teacher of color workforce in California, and consider and think about how you might use the toolkit in your own local context. A bit more about EdTrust West for those that, that haven't worked with us in the past. We're a nonprofit education equity organization focused on educational justice and closing achievement and opportunity gaps in the pre-K through higher ed pipeline through research, data, policy analysis, and advocacy. And one of the core components of our advocacy work is our data to the people work. And that's what we're here to share a bit more about today. In addition to our advocacy, our report, we do these uh, data equity walks um, where we, we bring together groups of stakeholders, um, local uh, education leaders, community members, and uh, build collective knowledge around data and use it to, as a tool for advocacy. Um, and one of our core components of, of that work <clears throat> is our Data to the People campaign. And that's a statewide effort we're engaged in to ensure that California builds out a data system that's designed 
with equity front and center. Um, and, and one of our core components as an organization and our data work is that we believe that clear and accessible data is crucial to ensuring education and workforce opportunities work for all students and families um, and all people in California. And so today we're going to share a bit more about how that work translates to our data equity lock toolkit. So first, uh, we'd love to start with why, why data matters. Um, Data, as we know, is a powerful tool for advocacy. Uh, it can be used to help identify patterns and how well schools, districts, programs, universities, settings like your own are, are serving students. Um, it can be used to build capacity for community members who are creating a common understanding about the challenges students and school systems face. So often we see an individual problem, an individual student, an individual parent story can become a collective story when we start to look at the data analyze the trends in that way I'm gonna, and it can be used to support and enhance local advocacy efforts focused on closing achievement and opportunity gaps and and data is also a powerful tool for equity for many of those same reasons right um, we can use it to shed light on systemic issues impacting students identify and eliminate barriers that affect certain students really focus and hone in on ensuring students have the support they need to succeed um, and increase justice and fairness within procedures, processes, and systems in our own context. So with that, I'd like to pause us and invite everyone to share in the chat what some data points look like in their own context. So this could range from great graduation outcomes, demographics, student achievement data, um, individual student reports. Even some of those qualitative data points, conversations with students, conversations with parents, teachers, administrators. Give folks just a few more seconds to respond if you if you'd like and then we'll continue. Thank you. Student success data, yes, definitely. Student retention data, student experience survey, yes, surveys can be a powerful data tool. Exit surveys. Mm -hmm. Data data without a purpose, yes. Yeah. All right, thank you all. Please continue to share if you'd like. Um, and Jenna, I'll pass it to you. Great, so yeah, and it is really helpful to uh, better understand what kind of data you are thinking about in your context. So feel free to continue to share, as Abby said. So a data equity walk um, is a way of democratizing access to data. Sometimes data is in the hands of a few and only some get to look at it and come up with analyses and interpretations. Um, and we at Just West want to ensure that everybody has access to that data and it's a part of the conversation about how we make sense of it and what do we do about it. So a data equity walk is designed to be an activity that could be a 45 minute to 90 minute activity and inclusive of all different stakeholders, um, including students of different ages, educators, leaders, faculty, community members, and others, again, depending on your context. There is time built into the flow for participants to engage with the data on their own and also collectively so that they have a shared understanding of the data before moving into discussing implications and identifying solutions to address the disparities that the data reveals. We also, um, 
encourage the incorporate, incorporation of visual data uh, displays and qualitative data to Abby's point earlier about sometimes um, quotes or conversations um, can be powerful data points to pay, paint a true picture of the equity gaps in our systems and institutions. And we really see that, have seen the data equity walk to be a powerful way to activate people and create some urgency around the equity gaps. For example, in this presentation, we're talking about, you know, the mismatch between the demographics of California student population and the educators in front of those classrooms in many of our school systems. So we have a little video um, that provides an overview of the data equity walk and I am going to go ahead and play that to give you a sense of what it is like um, in an in person setting. We call this the data equity walk. We think it's important once again that we engage in the data. We know that data doesn't tell the complete story. We know there's context to the data that you see. We want you to go and do a gallery walk and answer some of the questions that you see. Number one, what is the general reaction that you get from the data? How does the data strike? What's the story behind the data? How does this connect to your personal experience? What further information would be helpful? And what solutions do you think can happen to address these issues? So we've used the data equity walk in a number of different settings and contexts to give you a sense of the range of ways you could apply this. Um, we've facilitated data equity walks uh, with students uh, up at the Capitol in Sacramento to get them talking about their experiences and solutions to the challenges in the education system. Um, we've also facilitated data equity walks with districts as part of their LCAP community engagement process to determine where to invest resources to improve education outcomes. Um, we, have throughout the state, have worked with community-based partners to dig into key issues in their communities. Um, and we also, perhaps most relevant to this conversation, did partnered with uh, UC Berkeley and facilitated a data equity walk with prospective teacher candidates to get them interested in education equity issues. Um, you know, as we think about all of the different ways you could think about applying this data, um, some of you may have seen, those of you in the early ed space, uh, you know, the Center for the Study of Child Care Employment put out um, some data just this week about the current early ed workforce um, and what the impacts of expanding TK could have on the current workforce. There's a lot of rich data in the report. I just dropped the link in the chat that could be the, you know, something you could draw upon for a data equity walk to engage in conversation at the local level of what does this mean in our context. Um, we have a lot of our, our tools for the data equity walk on our website. Um, and so we're going to drop a link to that in the chat. Um, and so on the website, we have a version where slides are ready made with state level data. But I think for, for you all, probably the do it yourself data slides would be the most useful so that you can build in the data from your context that will be most relevant and useful to discuss. Um, and so you can find more information and protocols and guidance um, at that link that Abby just dropped into the chat. But for today, we wanted you to have a chance to experience what this could feel like um, in 
a virtual setting um, and by engaging in um, data around educators of color in California. Um, we know that the evidence is clear that all students benefit from having teachers of color and we know what to do. A lot of research has highlighted the practices that are effective at increasing both uh, recruitment and retention of teachers of color. And there's this unique window of opportunity this morning. Sarah Neville Morgan was talking about, you know, investments that the state has made. Right now, we have this opportunity to leverage the significant funds that will soon be available through the Golden State Teachers Grant, the Teacher Residency Grant Funds, classified staff grant programs, credential fee waivers, all of those are can be levers to increase educator diversity. Um, and we know that also there's a role for everyone, parents, teachers, students, to help advocate at the local level for how we could use some of these state opportunities, state funds, um, to increase the number of teachers of color in local communities. Um, and so that's sort of the context for the data we are going to be looking at today. So we, you know, in you saw in that video that in um, in the before times we would do a data equity walk in person with big poster boards of data and physical sticky notes and walk around and engage and talk with one another. Um, like everybody, we've adapted to the virtual context. And so we're going to engage in this activity today in breakout rooms using a jam board um, and virtual sticky notes as opposed to the real life version, uh, or I should say in real in person version. Um, and so as you engage in this activity, we invite you to really think about how you could adapt this for your context. Um, what data you might want to include, um, if there's any adjustment to the questions you might want to make, because um, our goal is, is to give you an experience that could help set you up to do this in your own context. So we will be um, sending you into breakout rooms. As we do that, please pay attention to the number that pops up um, when you get an invitation to go to a breakout room, what number it is, because we're going to ask you to access the Jamboard that has the corresponding number. So if you're in breakout room one, you want Jamboard one. Um, I am going to actually stop sharing this screen here and show you what these Jamboards look like. It's just going to take me a moment to do that. All right. So, can I get a thumbs up if you can see the Jamboard? Thank you. Okay, so. Um, you are going to be invited to engage with five different questions as you look at the data. There's a color corresponding to different sticky notes to engage with the different questions. So for the first one, what are your general reactions to the data? What questions do they raise for you? You could use a yellow sticky note. Um, what stories, what's the story behind the data? You could use a green sticky note. Uh, how do these data connect to your personal experience? Use a blue sticky note. What further information would be helpful, a pink one, and what solutions can you think of to address the issues being raised by this data, an orange sticky note. Um, to navigate through the different data slides, you use this arrow button up at the top, if you're not familiar with Jamboard. So you'll see that there is a mix of um, quotes here to give a sense of qualitative data that you might use, as well as some it, um, quantitative data. And if I want to create a sticky note, I go over here to this icon, the sticky note. I click on that. A sticky note pops up and I can select the color and then type a reaction or a thought. I click save and it'll show up here. If I wanted, if somebody else posted something that I really, um, that resonates with me, I can use this pen to circle it as a way of indicating yes, like, I agree with that comment or I'm having that reaction too. 
So you, you'll have time to move through these slides um, individually. I'm going to put this into the chat. We are encouraging you to take the first like five to um, five to eight minutes to respond on your own and then move into a conversation with the others in your breakout room. And let me also drop the links. Abby, are we doing um, three breakout rooms? Okay, I'm going to drop the links for those Jamboards into the chat as well. And you'll access the one that has the number that's the same as your breakout group. Let me pause and see what questions we can clarify before we send you into, um, into the breakout room. Once again, I'm dropping the directions into the chat. So those will go with you when you go into the breakout room. So roughly five to eight minutes to engage with the data individually. And then you can just check in with your group and say, hey, like, are we ready to start talking and see what's coming up as folks engage with the data? All right, we're gonna send you off to your breakout rooms and Abby and I will pop in to see how it's going. How much time do we have all together? Oh, great question, 15 minutes. Rosemary, do you need any assistance to get to your breakout room? All right, maybe we should have done two groups given the size. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I don't. So the timer feature is under the advanced settings. Um, uh, let's see if I can. Or would it just not? It just says close all rooms. So maybe I just have full privilege if I didn't set a You timer. may. <laughs> yeah, you may. I think what'll happen is when the four minutes are up, it'll ask you, do you want to close the rooms? And I think you could then say no. <laughs> So um, I feel like we are, we are, as you suggested, we would be way ahead of time. Yeah. Um, I guess we can just give me more time. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we could give people more time. We also could um, share the HR guide and like the scene heard reflected or like the landing page. And I don't know, I was just trying to think whether that might be helpful to like, if you are equipped to on the fly, talk to the like scene heard reflected resources and just see if anyone has any questions. And if we end early, we end early. Um, mm -hmm. We could be a lot of really interesting questions about why why are some of, why are these numbers, are there different, what are the reasons for it? What's the source, you know, and, and sort of um, triggers a need to investigate, you know, are these, is this because people don't even start on this pathway to become teachers or they get discouraged partway through or they, um, you know, never get their credential. And, it, you know, it really brings up a lot of, of questions that I'd love to delve into more.
Absolutely, yeah. And just to reiterate Jenna's point, I, I think a lot of this, it becomes a further inquiry, right? This is now we understand what's missing from the conversation to help guide our next steps. Thank you. Other thoughts and reactions? Great, I love to see that, Megan. <laughs> and and I know we've had we've had quite a bit of success with this activity with students. Um, definitely a lot of, of interesting perspectives and findings that come out um, when you when you bring those voices into the conversation. So love to hear that. Here, yes, definitely nothing, nothing new in the data. Um, and um, I think as Jenna spoke to earlier, um, I don't think anyone here assumes that this is not the data picture and also we know what the right solutions are. Um, so appreciate you elevating that and, and driving the conversation towards how we can make some concrete changes. All right, thank you all for, for sharing out. And again, appreciate you all for engaging with the activity. Um, to that point, we really would love to close out the conversation by sharing some of the other resources that Ed Trust West has created. Um, I'll acknowledge that most but we do have a variety of resources on our website that span the early ed through, through higher ed landscape. So definitely encourage you to check some of those out if you're interested. Um, but this guide is one that we wanted to highlight specifically around recruiting and retaining educators of color. Um, and it's a guide that we put out in partnership with the SESA, designed for all education stakeholders to start conversations and explore ideas about how to better recruit, support, retain, um, and, and, and bring teachers of color into districts and classrooms. Um, and it, it sets out recruitment and retention tips to support LEAs. Uh, as they improve on existing recruitment practices to reach an appeal to a more diverse set of candidates and improve existing retention processes to create affirming school environments that support educators of color to stay. And the guide itself details, it's a four pager and it details um, the scope of, of the problem again, and then dives into some more concrete recommendations uh, that, that district leaders and others can adopt in their own settings. And all of that, um, just, just to reiterate, is, is housed on our website. So we have under uh, that guide is housed under an umbrella of work called our Seen Heard Reflected Campaign, which is uh, a, ser a series of resources and guides that uh, highlight both the, the challenge of California's educator of color shortage and also provide a broader way of policy solutions and practice solutions that we advocate for um, that we we encourage folks at all levels to explore and, and think about implementing in their context to better support educators of color. Um, and, and that's the link there to, to the resources. Definitely encourage you to Explore those if you haven't seen them before. And, and that concludes what we have to share today. Um, but we we love spending time with you. We, we hope that you stay in touch. We're happy to answer any questions that may have come up for you about the conversation today. We're also happy to engage in conversations if you would like to implement a data equity walk in your own context and support you in thinking through what uh, that could look like. So thank you all for being here today and we appreciate your time and energy engaging in our activity. Thank you. And Megan, apologies if that link was broken. I just tried to drop it in again.
Does that new does that second link work better? Yes, thank you. Oh, that was Marini. Sorry, yes. yeah, Megan. Thank you. <laughs> Track in the chat. No worries. Okay. Thank you. And feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you. 